Letting the enemy know that we ain't playing tonight. We're going to give a lot of eviction notice tonight. Love don't live here anymore. We're going to let the devil know. There's a lot of people here that you need, you need a touch from God. You need a touch from God. You need a breakthrough. You need to hold on to his garment tonight. You can't bring this hogwash stuff that's going on in your life, these patterns and sacraments to 2019. We got to cut the rope tonight. You with me? We got to cut the rope tonight. We're going to divorce some stuff tonight. We're going to let the enemy know that you don't own no real estate rights in my life. You understand? There's no legal rights. Cut the rope. Let it go. Might be some people you're going to have to cut off. I don't hang out with chicken coop Christians. God called me to be an eagle. I fly above the storm. Matter of fact, the storm will propel me to fly over the storm. Ain't no devil going to stop me from God's best. Ain't no witch is going to stop me from God's best. Ain't no witchcraft going to stop me from God's best. Because you can't curse what God has blessed. So tonight, we're going to let the enemy know. We're going to let the enemy know tonight that I am God's good investment. God didn't make no mistake when he saved me. I'm going to give God a good return. And we thank God for Rock Church. We thank God for the pastors in his house, the leaders in his house. Amen. Thank you for inviting me. Amen. Thank you for having me. And I, I you know, one, one thing I have to say, I ain't signed up for no Christianity. Thank God for that. I thank God and signed up. I didn't fill out an application. Jesus came looking for me, and it was because there was nothing good in me. But the mercy, mercy and grace kissed each other and came and found me. Because I was, I was, I was in. It, it, it's amazing that we go to church, and I thank God for every person here, but we go to church, and, and we don't last no more than two hours in the church. As soon as the preacher say amen, we turn in the car on. It's like the person is rushing in traffic to get to the red light. And we're rushing, and we're rushing, and we're running. But we like the hamster on the wheel. All this commotion, but nothing is moving. When I was going, when I, at eight years old, I was going to demon church from seven in the evening to five in the morning. I was going to witchcraft church from seven in the evening to five in the morning. And then you're going to come with me with your cheap Christianity for two-hour service? When I was being trained to know spiritual warfare from the very beginning, I walked into the church. When I was being trained about what is the second heaven, first heaven, when I was being trained about territory demons on the ground, how do I make contra, how I astral project, how do I go into your house in the spirit and curse your house, curse your marriage, curse your kids, and walk out, and you even know I was there. Because you were playing patty cake with the devil. You had a false Christianity. You had, you had no substance in you. It wasn't because your God wasn't all powerful. It was because the vessel was weak. So how is it that, how is it that, that I wanted to sign up? How is it that I, that I wanted to be part of, of, of the church? I had more power than y'all. So what, what, what you had to give me? What do you have to offer? A bunch of scriptures? Did you even believe it yourself? No, it's going to get hot in here. Either you're going to say hallelujah or you're going to say ouch. But you're going to say something. <laughs> see, preachers don't tell you that. You see, you see, my father was a warlock. My generation on my father's side, there were witches and warlocks and warlords. And, and there was only to the witchcraft for summoning demons and devils. And the devil himself lived in my house for 25 years of my life. All I did was, was not only, not only ham, I saw the example of my father. Because my father was a warlock. My father was into witchcraft. My father was into santeria, spiritualism, palamanyuma. I still bear the marks of when I saw my soul. It's, it's all over my body, carved. I see these Satanist people walk around dressed in black. I'm like, who died? 
You're not afraid of you. If I'm in with Jesus, who are you? I see Christians panicking about witches and warlocks and panicking about witchcraft. Oh, the witch is hurting me. Hurt her back. Would you bring it to me? I bring it right back into your neighborhood. And if you put a chicken in my door, I make sure I get your address. I'm bringing it right back to your house. It's called spiritual warfare. Read it. It's in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? You put, you put witchcraft in my house, I wrap it up, and it's a Christmas gift, and I bring it right back to your house. I see you left this at my door. We need to come to a place to understand that we are the church of the book of Acts. We're not a Moses generation. The Moses generation died in the desert. How is it that we're playing patty cake with the devil? Or if I don't talk about the devil, the devil won't leave it. He'll leave me alone. You got churches today. No one exposing the enemy. People coming to church fragmented. People coming to church. People coming to church sick. They got Christian taking more medication. And no one casting out that, that pharmacia spirit. No one infirmity spirit. No one is putting it on check. No one is breaking the back of the devil. No one is cutting the rope. No one is uprooting anything anymore. Now we're in a place now. Oh, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. I'm going to teach you how to get rich. I don't need to get rich. I don't need to get happy. I know how to get the devil out of my house. I need to get that devil out of my house, out of my marriage, out of my children. I need to break that generation of curse because if I could throw the rock 150 feet, I want my daughter, I want my son to throw it 300 feet. Now it's like we, we come into a church, now everything is new age. We got more witchcraft in the church today. We got, thank God for real churches like rock. They preach it, they preach it. They preach it, you get convicted, you got two choices. You run to the altar, you run out the building. But they're gonna preach truth to you. And the only thing is gonna set you free the truth of Jesus Christ. Because how is it that as a devil worshiper, I was going to demon church. My father was a warlock. I remember my father used to turn the he used to turn the whole living room on fire. The whole living room on fire. And me and my brother jump over the fire, purifying us with a fake fire. I remember when I first went to, to, to my mom, my mom and my aunt, they went to a tower car reading, and they brought me along. And, and the witch, she fixed her eyes on me. She said, oh, you, you, you we need to get you. You see, because the devil's after young people. The devil's after young people. And we make impact with the devil, the social media, the television, whatever garbage we watch. We make impact. Oh, I got the mind of Christ. No, you don't. You got the mind of stupid. You don't got the mind of Christ. Because you did, you won't be sitting down three hours and watching that crap. Meanwhile, you don't give God three minutes. Who owns your rights? Who owns your legal rights? Who, own, who owns your time? So whatever you give your time to, it becomes your God. You become a slave to whatever you give your time to because you see, you can lose money, you can lose friends, you, you can lose a job, but God's time and opportunity are priceless. So we need to come to a place to understand what, what kind of Christian am I? Am I I'm a believer? I'm just a Christian Dior Christian. You get it later. <laughs> how is it that, that, that if you go to demon church? They were teaching me demonic spiritual warfare, how to, how to astral project. Now we got people saying, oh, well, we do angel cards. Well, we do angel boy. We levitate. That's part of Christianity. You better sit down. Levitate. You ain't going to levitate my service. Because I cast that devil out of you and you levitate nowhere. <laughs> We get fooled so easily. We buy into the Kool-Aid. We drink the Kool-Aid. Then we want to slap the name of Jesus on it. And Jesus is not even in the house. Inca Bob left the house. Inca, the glory of God left the house. And we're teaching by Jesus, but you don't hear Jesus teaching us. Because we have come to a place that we, now the church has become entertainment. We have to entertain you to keep you. I need to bring the Holy Spirit to convict you so you can stay. I don't want to be entertained. I live in New York City. I live in New York City. They have a whole bunch of Broadway plays. If I want to entertain them, buy me a ticket. 
I need you to preach me, preach me like David Wilkerson, you will preach me. Wilkerson, you preach fire. He used to say, all to cause for homosexual. I go up just in case. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> all to cause for this. I go up just in case. Because I'm going to keep my house clean. <laughs> keep my house clean. So we come to a place. At the age eight, I lost my whole childhood. Because my mom brought me to the witch. And the, witch, and the witch turned around and fixed her eyes on me. My mom was supposed to get the car reading. My aunt was supposed to get the car reading. I ended up getting the car reading. And the witch said, told my mom, and if you don't do this ceremony to your son in 30 days, he's going to lose his eyesight. And my mom saw her furniture and did the ceremony. They saw me to the dark side at the ages of. At the ages of, I was going to demon church. When Christian was going to Christian church. When you were doing coloring books in your Christian church, I was communicating with principalities and territorial and familiar spirits. At, at, the, at the age of eight, nine years old, I was drinking animal blood. Because, there's, because you see, in the witchcraft world, there's, 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 there's something, they say, there's, there's power in the blood. I was learning how to communicate with principalities. I was learning how to communicate the colors, the sign, the, the symbols. How do you communicate? How do you, how, do you, how do you lend your body to become a medium? How do you get demon possessed all night long? Dance on the fire. Be, be, be in, in, into this. Uh, it's a cult to understand how to steal people's minds. How to steal your purpose. How to steal your destiny. I, I, I moved up the ranks. As I moved up the ranks, I remember my, my father, my father one day, I remember my aunt broke into the house and said, oh my God, they killed your father. At the age of 13, I went to my father's funeral. He got shot for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. And my father, when my father was home, he was still absent. And the sad thing about it is that this, this person I hated the most, I became like the person I hated the most. When my daughter used to stand by the window, I remember a little, a little Asia, God bless her, and got a hedge of protection always around her. I remember my daughter, my daughter was in the window said, my daddy's coming. And my daddy never showed up because I became just like the person that I hated. And I had this, I, had, I, had, I remember I felt like the guy in the, in the guys in the tomb, Mark chapter 5, full of demons. Hatred. And then you had these phony Christians that will come up to me and say, you're going to hell. But tell me something I don't know. I might be going to help, but with your religious spirit, you might be tagging along right with me. And they call that evangelism. I'm better than you. Oh, really? Let me put witchcraft on you and see how good you are. And, 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 and then the terms, every time you had to do a contract, every time you had to do a ceremony, every time you had to do a ritual, it was not about animals crying in the middle of the night and you're drinking their blood because this, there was supposed to be power in the blood. He, he, animals screaming, ceremony, ceremony, the devil showed up. And you have to, it's funny how, how Christians don't fear God. How Christians think God is just a man. There's no reverence and fear of God in the church anymore. These people today, the church fear more the devil than they fear Jesus Christ. It's, it's amazing that if you understand that the God you serve, you tremble. Even said the demons tremble. He said the demons believe and tremble. The church believe, but it doesn't tremble. Because we, we have looked at God through our, how was it, puny eyes. He is the seal of the universe. He sits in the circle of the earth. Nothing moves, nothing breathes, nothing operates, nothing shifts. Nothing happens without his permission. I mean, I think God has this in human. When, he, when, when I got saved, I thought God was calling my neighbor. I got caught up in the middle. Never sign up for Christianity. Never say, I want to be a Christian. Oh, I can't wait. Because every time everywhere I went, I saw Christians hanging out in, in clubs. I saw Christians hanging out in house parties. I saw Christians drinking and getting drunk. No one was sold out. Christians had half of Jesus and half of the world in them. 
So I knew how to come into, I knew how to come in and talk at a Christian, and I knew how to take a Christian and, and, and set him up in the mind that I would, I would contaminate his mind. I would, I would fragment his mind because if I can fragment your mind, I can fragment your soul. And if I can fragment your soul, that means I own legal rights on you, and I will leave you my number so you're going to need this because you're going to have to call me because my dad is bigger than yours. And Christians, they will come and get tarot card readings. And when I said I was going to put witchcraft on you, I was so lethal in witchcraft that I, I said, if I'm going to put witchcraft on you and I'm going to kill you in 30 days, prepare your funeral because you was going to die. Because you can't stop something that I'm going to send to you that you don't have the power to stop anyway because you can't see it. And astral projecting. And I would astral project and turn myself into a wolf and end up in people's homes. I was so high in the power of astral projecting that I would, I would even fall asleep during the day to curse neighborhoods on the other side of the pond. You with me? So how is, it, how is it that the church was ready for me? I sat in the church, got demon possessed, grabbed the pastor by the throat, picked him up in the air, and no one rebuked anything. They had to get men to pry my hands off the pastor because there was no anointing. There was no power. How is it that I grabbed the pastor by the throat, lift him up? He couldn't breathe. He was turning purple. In the church, in your territory, in your own playground, I came for you. And you do, not, you do nothing. You needed 15 minutes to get me off you. I wish I wish show up today and play that with me. I'll give you a perm. I don't need 15 men. You come up here and try to grab me, I catch the devil out of you like this. I've seen too much in Jesus to doubt. I've seen too much. I've seen too much in Jesus Christ. So think that you're going to come over and take over this service. I got off the boat a long time ago. I'm not talking about the Puerto Rican boat either. I ain't talking about that boat. <laughs> I'm talking about the Jesus boat. I ain't get off that boat. I'm talking about the Jesus boat. I'm walking on water with Jesus. And I know one thing I've learned. I don't keep my eyes on the church. I keep my eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. See, the church is a hospital. All the sick people come. So I don't understand how people say, well, my pastor didn't get say hello to me. I ain't coming to church. A bishop didn't grab my hand. Oh, oh, the sister in the church is gossiping about me. Well, I ain't going to church for her anyway. She's an ICU just like me. I'm coming to get healed. I'm coming to get delivered. I know it's a funny thing. As a devil worshiper, no one ever messed with me because they knew I, I'll kill your mama. I'll kill your dog. I'll kill your cat. I'll kill your goldfish. The witchcraft stuff I knew. I know so much witchcraft. I knew so much. I, I knew so much witchcraft that I had a book that was given to me in in the planet. I'm, I'm not talking about New York City. I'm talking about the planet. I was the third person to get the book with symbols. That any symbol that I use from that book and put a demon to it and send it to your house, I would destroy your house. And if you, Jesus didn't live in your house, that's the only thing that was able to save you. And I remember that, that, that I looked at the open the book and the last page was missing. And the two warlocks that gave me the book it was a Dominican guy and there was a Cuban guy. This guy, this Cuban guy was so demonic. They shot him 45 times and he was in ICU. And three days later, he walked out of ICU. This guy was a, a living devil. He shot him, they shot him 45 times, close range with a machine gun. He was in ICU. A couple of days later, he walked out like nothing. I see so much black magic. I see so much stuff happening in the witchcraft world. And I'm saying, where is the power in the church? Where is the power in the church? When the church is sitting down and the church is compromising, the church is sitting down and celebrating Halloween. I never see no Satanist say, hey, you know what? I'm a Satanist and I can't wait till you invite me to Good Friday. The church, the church is, is delusional. We got delivery spirits in the church today. Delusional spirits in the church. And thank God we have a remnant like the church here today. We're not dancing with the devil with the blue dress on in his house. And, and, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know what's crazy? I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding in Halloween. 
I had a demonic wedding. I had a rituals and warlocks and witches came to my wedding and demonic demons came down and blessed my wedding. No one, no human being showed up to my wedding. They were too afraid. I didn't get that. You know how they do the register list? You know, you get gifts. I didn't get one of those. I didn't get one of those. I didn't get no pots, pans, and none of that. No microwave. I didn't get none of that. Remember demons and warlock and rituals and animals and killings and blood and blood sacrifices and cutting myself when I couldn't have, I couldn't buy an animal and drinking my own blood. So how is it you going to come and mess with me with your phony Christianity? It, 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 it's, like, it's like an example. It's like the police officer, no offense to police officers, but the ones in New York City, you know, they, 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 they do six months training in the academy, and then they, they in McDonald's. Six months training in the academy, and then in your lunch break, you hang, you're eating Mickey D's. And then you got the guy in the Middle East. The first thing he get at two years old is a chemistry, stre- a chemistry set. And he's creating bombs and all that stuff. And this guy been trained from two years old to be a, to be a demonic person, to be a person, that, a terrorist. At two years old, and you're going to tell me with your six months academy training, you're going to stop him? I don't think so. This guy is smarter than you in your sleep. Something about the Middle Eastern people. They, they, they got that. God gave them a good brain. God gave, I thought when God was giving our brains, I thought he was giving our books. I got on the line. You get it? I, got on, I came off the little bus. So, so I, my, my, my question to you, how is it that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my own all, how is it that I left a daddy I hung out with the devil for 25 years of my life. Marrying Halloween, drinking animal blood, putting witchcraft on people. I, I put witchcraft on my own family. I put my brother in jail for five years to witchcraft. I gave people abortions and miscarriages to witchcraft. Because I know that if I kill the baby in the womb, that is the church of Jesus Christ. And when, when you become a devil worshiper, when you become a high-ranked devil worshiper, you become a general in the kingdom of darkness, you lose your conscience, you lose your thinking, you lose your mindset. Because you can't do this kind of evil witchcraft and have a conscience. Destroy people's marriage for my money. The, 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 uh, my book, out of, uh, this is an amazing thing. In my book, uh, uh, Out of the Devil's Card, there's a chapter in that book. It's called Amazing Grace. There's a chapter in that book, out of the Devil's Card, my first book that I wrote, is a chapter called Amazing Grace. And the reason I call that chapter Amazing Grace was because of the fact that this lady came up to me. She said, my husband is cheating with this Christian lady. And I need you to kill her. And, and, and she came to my house and we had a meeting. She said, I need you to destroy her. I need you to kill her. I said, I'll kill her. She, she got me all the information. And I said, I will destroy her. I will kill her. And, and she, said, I, she said, how much you would? No, before, I didn't know she was a Christian lady. She said, my husband's cheating with this lady at work. And I said, I'll kill her for you. Give me, give me 10 grand. And she said, okay, $10,000, you kill her. And then when she was going to walk out my house, she said, by the way, she's a Christian lady. I said, I'll kill her for free. So I bought 21 candles, I bought a coffin box, I took her picture, I, 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 I bought her personality, her character, I put in the coffin box, I put the 21 candle because the devil works for 21. And I put it and I washed it and I did all kind of other stuff, all the other stuff to the witchcraft, to the stuff. And it was 30 days went by, 40 days went by, 45 days went by, and she said, she's still breathing, she's still alive. And I was like, oh, I have to question this because when I put witchcraft on people, they usually end up at the morgue. And this lady did not end up at the morgue. And I remember one day I was sitting down watching TV and I, I feel this presence come into my apartment. And the devil said, we have to abort the plan from this lady. And I said, you can't abort the plan. We need to kill her. And he said, why? I, I said, why? He said, because her God said, leave her alone. Amazing grace. In her sin, in her debauchery, in her mistake, in her struggles. Jesus showed up and rebuked the devil. The devil had to come to my house. Leave her alone. That is the God that we serve. Then when you're wrong, he still has mercy on you. When you're living in your mistakes, when you're living in your mistakes, he still wants to set you free. 
You know what's the amazing thing between God and the devil? When the devil doesn't need you anymore, he kills you. When the devil, when you playing with the devil and you do something wrong, the devil punish you. And when, you, when, you, when you're hanging out with Jesus and you do something wrong, he forgives you. And salvation is free, but it cost me $3,500 to sell my soul to the devil. So I, 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 come, I, come, I, I say to you with this, as an ex devil worshiper, as a person that, 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 that I control the neighborhood, I locked down the corners of my neighborhood. I had demons, I had, I had, more, I had powers with de- different demons of territory. I had a power with a demon, his name was Etchu, and the Etchu demon was the one that lived in the corner. That's why you saw drive bys. Because I knew how to put blood in the corner so they would be, have, have drive bys in the corner and people would die. Many people today are dying in the corners, and the church ain't doing nothing about it. The, the, the spiritual warfare is real, people. And in the end, if we're not spiritual warfare, if, we, if, we not, if we not, we're not spiritual warfare people, the devil, it's, it's amazing because a lot of times we, we, so we have so much power and authority in the kingdom of Jesus Christ that we underestimate the power and the authority that we got. We can move, we can move anything in the spirit realm. We can, we can break, we can break, we can separate, we can uproot anything in the spirit realm. I don't need someone to lay hands on me. I lay hands on myself. I don't need to do commitment. I got commitment in my house. I set the record straight with the devil anywhere I go. I was telling pastor, I was, I was in St. Croix. I'm going back and forth. I'm trying to teach you. I was in St. Croix. And I did this amazing altar call. And the witch of St. Croix came. This, this dude came up to the altar. And he came up. He said, I'm the witch of St. Croix. And I came to destroy you and your meeting. Other Christians, other Christians would have quivered their pants. First of all, I'm far away from home. I'm in his territory. I'm doing the altar call. And he's on my face. You coming? You know where I'm coming from? Did I panic? You bet your bottom dollar I didn't. I said to him, listen, first of all, take your hand out of my face. I'm a work in progress. I, I grew up in the Bronx. I'm a work in progress. The Bronx. I'm a work in progress. You can have, before you walk out of here, be nine fingers. I said, get that finger out of my face. I told him, I got the five-fold ministry. You with me? I got the five-fold ministry. Amen? And I told him, I told him, I told him, see, I told him listen to me. I told him, I got his attention, now he lost ground. Did you bring all your tools with you? He said, what are you talking about? I got more territory on you. See, he said me stepping backwards, you stepping backwards, because I'm talking to you mind to mind, spiritual, spiritual, warfare, warfare. Who's getting the territory of the mind? And he said to me, I, I got everything. I said, you sure? Now I got him guessing. Because I played that game before when I was on that side of the world. Be, that's out of the cross. B.C., before Christ. That's what I used to tell Christians. You sure you God said that? You sure you believe the scriptures? You sure that book ain't lying to you? Because I see this in you, because I have familiar spirit to remind you about your past. You, you, you had two abortions. How could God forgive you? You killed two people. Your father's a drunk. You've been raped. You've been touched. You've been molested. You've been molested. And, and you telling me that God's okay with that? See, do you sure God loves you? Because you have a fragmented soul, and your soul is fragmented. And you have, I, don't see you, I don't see you heal. I see you cry at night. I would say things to Christians, and Christians would, would, would entertain it. They would buy into it. They, they, they would, they would, they would they, they, instead of, now they got a question mark instead of having the answer. That's what I did to the witch, but in the Christian side. And he said, I said, I'm here for three days. I said, you can come back the third day with everything you got. He said, why? I said, because when I open up this can of whipping on you in about 30 seconds, I could talk that way. I grew up in the Bronx. I said, when I open up this can of whipping on you in 30 seconds, I don't want, I don't want you to say that it's not a fair fight. I don't want you to say it's not a fair fight. He said, I got everything that I got. Bring it. I said, okay. I said, catch it. Bam, put my hand on him. In the name of Jesus, 
he dropped. He started to swarm, turn into a pretzel. He started to curve and do all kind of stuff. And the people, and, and he was vomiting his mouth. His whole face was vomit. I mean, puking all over. And this is Christian. Oh, my God, he's going to die. So what? <laughs> At least he died in church. <laughs> so what? It took me 40 minutes before I prayed for him. I prayed for a whole bunch of Christians before I got to him. You're going to learn how to respect the cross. You're going to respect my altar call. You're going to have to respect. One way or another, you're going to respect. After I finished praying with him, he gave his life to Jesus. He was in and out. You know, he said, can I get your number? I still want to kill you. I said, you don't get my number. Please, shut up. Go home. He came to these two services, and I prayed for him. Because, you see, no one, see, one thing I learned about Jesus, the more humble you stay, the more humble you stay, the more he can use you. Because, you see, that's, that person was me. In the Mark chapter 5, that was me. That the man in the tomb was me in Mark chapter 5 because I used to sleep and hang out in cemeteries and for real as a witch doctor. Because I made packs with demons in the cemetery that when someone died by cancer, I would buy the character and the personality of that person, grab a demon, put it on you, and you die cancer. I would hang out in the ocean to make packs with marine spirits. I would hang out in the river to make packs with river spirits. I would hang out in the mountains and the high places and make pact with second and first heaven with demonic forces and bring them down and send them to your house. When the church is asleep, the church ain't teaching no spiritual warfare. So how could you stop something that you don't have no, you don't have no discipleship behind it? That's why discipleship is so important in the house of God. You know, that's why the Bible said that, 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 that my people perish. There you go. So how are you going to dismantle, uproot? You can't, you can't be like to some Siskiva, oh, we cast Jesus out in the name Paul preach. And the demon said, well, yo, gee, we, Paul we know and Jesus we know. Who are you? That means you have no authority. You got no rank. You got no anointing. You, you have nothing that represents Jesus Christ. I mean, you have legal rights to beat you down so good that your clothes will come off. That's what kind of beating they got. They have to go clothes shopping after that. So how is it that today in the house of the Lord, in, in God's house, we are still fragmented. We still got strongholds. And if you're in this house and you're a Judas, I'm going to get you today. Because you're going to respect this house. So I advise you before my altar call, run out. That's my advice to you. Before the altar call, run out because I'm going to come get you. I'm not afraid of you. You're going to respect this house. You're going to respect the pastors of this house. You're going to respect the anointing's house. You're going to respect the foundation's house. You're going to respect the founders of this house. Your witchcraft doesn't work in this house. Your witchcraft doesn't work. It won't work in this house. And I'm going to send it back to you until you get tormented and until you repent. I promise you that. That before you leave, if you're here with the wrong intentions, before you leave, I'm sending that witchcraft back to you. And you'll be tormented. And you'll be running to the house of God to ask for forgiveness. You're going to respect the house of God. And if you have a gossip language, if you have a gossip tongue, I'm going to tie your tongue in Jesus' name and set the Father, Holy Spirit upon your tongue until you repent. It's time to respect the house of God. If I don't like my brother and I have an issue with my brother or my sister, the Bible said leave my gift at the altar and go make peace with my brother and sister, right? Because there might be days, it might be a good day, but it might be a situation. You might say to me, I say to you, we can make peace with each other. I don't have to gossip about you. I don't have to throw you under the bus. I don't have to chase the leadership. I don't have to do the Satan's bidding in the house of God. You must have a delusional spirit. Because, you see, let me tell you one thing. As a young Christian, as, as a young Christian, I got betrayal in the house of God. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got sucker punch in the house of God. I, I got Christian that did a Ponzi scheme on me in the house of God. I had to declare bankruptcy in the house of God. True bankruptcy. I ain't had no money to eat. I was in the Bahamas preaching the gospel when people betrayed me, when people backstabbed me, when people did, you know, Christian witchcraft. They took everything, they took $50,000 out of my account and left me broke. And they left me broke. And I had to go to bankruptcy court in 2014, declare bankruptcy, and still love on Jesus. 
And my brother called me up. And my brother knows the Latin Kings. My brother knows the Bloods. He knows the Cribs. My brother called me up. My brother did 15 years in jail. He called me up. He said, well, I'm going to go to the church and drive them out of the church with my boys and put a beating them down. We'll beat them downstairs outside, outside of the church. We'll put them on the phone. You can hear them scream. I was looking for scripture. I was looking for scripture. Vengeance is the Lord. I can't. That's not the one that's going to work. <laughs> Close. But I heard the Holy Spirit say, if I've forgiven you so much, you forgive others as much as I've forgiven you. As much as I've forgiven you, you forgive others. And I forgave those people. I remember I ate more Chinese food than any Chinese person. I ate Chinese food for three years. Non-stop. Chinese food for three years I ate. Pizza. I was more Italian than anybody. I ate more slice of pizza in Sicily for three years. And I used to walk by the restaurants in New York City and say, ooh, that's French fry smells real good. And I think, because they would eat outside, you know, in the summertime, I would walk by and say, one day I'm going to eat there. And God said, because I trust you in the situation that I put you in, because where I'm taking you, yeah, it's good. I'm going to buy the CD. Because I trust you in the situation that I put you in. I'll allow that to happen to you because I'm breaking you. I'm taking you somewhere. See, when they thought they, they thought they buried me, they just planted me. And the Lord had done a great work in my life. There's nothing missing, nothing broken in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm the only Puerto Rican with good credit. <laughs> You'll get it later. God restore everything that the conqueror and locust has seen and out of my life. God restore my relationship with my daughter. God restore my mom is, is a Christian. My daughter is a Christian. You with me? You with me? My, 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 give me 10 minutes and we do an altar call and we beat up some devils. My question to you is not where you start, it's where you finish. It's not what you start, it's what you finish. The day I finish this race, I will do three things, and I promise you this. When I finish this race, three things are going to happen. I will leave a legacy for my daughter. And for whoever I'm going to marry, I will leave a legacy like your husband did. And you're going to leave a legacy. When you go home, people are still going to be talking about you. I will leave a legacy. When I close my eyes for the last time, I will make Jesus Christ proud. And when I close my eyes for the last time I go home with the Lord, hell will rejoice because I left the battlefield. Because I am a spiritual sniper, special ops for Jesus Christ. I live on the daily bread. I don't live on cake like a lot of ministries do. You with me? We're in a time right now that we have to have more discernment than any time in the world. We need to have more discernment today because you're not going to preach 90% truth to me. The other percent is a lie. Is you going to bring all truth or don't bring nothing at all? I'm not married to your church. I'm married to Jesus. I can walk out and go somewhere else. They're going to feed me. I'm not going to die and decay and spiritually waste away when I'm God's good investment because I got treasure in me. It is the Holy Spirit in me. I got treasure in me. Why would God, in 1999, when I was preparing for the biggest witchcraft onslaught on the Church of Jesus Christ, I was preparing the biggest witchcraft onslaught in 1999 in October. October is witchcraft month, by the way. October is witchcraft month. And Chris, shame on you if you ever celebrated Halloween. You need to come and repent. Shame on you. I don't care if you dress yourself up like the little mermaid. It's still a marine spirit. Okay? I don't care if you dress yourself like Casper the friendly ghost. It's still a devil. Because you see what the devil does to you, when you put on that costume, he has changed your identity. And once he changed your identity, he owns legal rights over your life. That means, that he, I don't understand how Christians be celebrating this trash. When they celebrate this trash, they turn around and then 10 years later, 
10 years later, 15 years, why my son is on drugs? Well, you opened the door when he was five. Oh, it was, a, it was only one opportunity, one time. Well, talk to him, Adam and Eve. It only cost him one time to lose the condo. You give the devil one opportunity. Talk to Esau. He, for both soup, he lost everything. The devil needs one time to take everything that you own and everything that you stand for. He'll strip you. He'll rob you. He come to steal, steal, he come to steal kill, and destroy and he's playing because he knows his time is short. And you know, he has, a, he has, he has a, a time and a measure to bring it to you like you've never seen it before. But we are the true church of Jesus Christ. We fear not. We panic not. That's why when I wrote, I wrote the book, I'm in Dangerous and I'm Asking the Devil, when I wrote these books, one of them was separating my books from other people's spiritual warfare book. I got spiritual warfare prayers in the book. I don't talk about the devil in my book. I don't talk about it. I confront him. Church, every church is talking about the devil. No one is confronting him. I mean, no one is confronting him. No one, no, the spiritual warfare prayers are, your, are, are what keeps you and, and maintain you and equip you to be special up for Jesus and bring down, bring down in the enemy's camp. You are, you bring down the targets in the enemy's camp. That's what spiritual warfare prayer is about in my book. You bring those targets down, you destroy them. You destroy them, whether generational or whether, whether, whether something, whatever door you open. Whatever door you open. Because if you don't close it, the devil is going to come and collect. The devil is going to come and collect. He knows that he owns some property, legal rights over your life. And if there's no renunciation about it, if there's no cutting the rope. If there's no saying, devil, I renounce this in the name of Jesus Christ. I have no ties with this no more. I renounce it whether it's known and unknown. I renounce it in Jesus' name. No longer you have this situation over me. If you don't, have, if you don't know how to renounce and cut the rope, because what you don't kill is going to end up killing you. Christians are dying before time, premature death. And you can't blame God for nothing because God gave you all. God said when he said the cross is finished, he gave you, you everything that you needed to fight the good fight of faith. So how is it that, how is it that, that the Lord Jesus Christ, man, I, tell, I teach you, I, man, one day I can come back and teach you. I teach you spiritual warfare on levels. I teach you spiritual warfare, how to break, dismantle, uproot, identify. I teach you how to, how to understand the patterns and cycles of the kingdom of darkness, how to identify the devil coming from a mile away before he gets your block. Understand? Because we need to expose. We're not bragging about the enemy. We're exposing him for who he is. Jesus said, expose the works of darkness. Don't sleep with them. Some people don't want me to cast out the devil on them because they're going to need them next week anyway. So how is, how is it that, and then December, witchcraft month, by the way, December is witchcraft month, December. If, if you really want to do something in December, take three days of fasting in December. Take three days of fasting in December. And then uh, on January 1st, take 21 days of Daniel fast. Because in December, while you are in the mall chilling out with Santa Claus, we in the mall hanging out with the fat guy. The witches are in witchcraft church doing ceremonies, how to usher one principality from one region to another. You with me? And they're doing witchcraft and ceremony, preparing themselves for 2019. When you in the mall say, what size he is? He's a medium or he's a large? The witches are preparing an onslaught against the church. Because I did it. I did it. My last meeting that I went before, because I felt Jesus was touching my heart, man. And I was like, I, I didn't want him to touch me because when Jesus touched you, man, you just say yes. <laughs> when, he, when he touched you, you just say yes. I mean, he was touching my heart. He was, and I was like, oh, no, get away. Get away. Get away. Get, don't touch me now. Get away. <laughs> get away. He was touching my heart. My mind was so confused. And, I went, and then I had to go to the demonic meeting. And I went to this demonic meeting for the last meeting. 17 warlocks went to this meeting because we were was, we was planning for the next year. It was, it was like 20 degrees, 15 degrees outside. It was 4 in the morning. I went to the meeting. We were in the meeting. 4 in the morning. Meeting went to 4 in the morning. The devil came down to the meeting. The devil came down in the meeting for the last meeting. And he said demonic tongues. He said, we, in the kingdom of darkness, we speak demonic tongues. They fall backwards too. Like we do. 
Oh, yeah. You say, wow, you can say hallelujah. That's when I came to church and I saw people falling backwards. Well, we used to do that. When I see people speaking in, in, the holy, in the holy language, we used to do that too. We used to copy everything you had. And we, to the T. Because if you don't know, <laughs> to the T, if you handle the sermon, you say, oh, that's the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. That's the devil. So, 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 so when, I, when I was in, in this meeting, the devil came down. He said, my son, can I talk to you in demonic tongue? I said, sure, because I knew the language. And he said to me, you know what God throws out of heaven? I said, why? He said, he was jealous of us. And that thing hit me like a rock. And I was like, and then the meeting was over. The devil left. And then I was walking home. It was, it was like 15, I'm sorry, 15 degrees outside. I mean, you can just smoke coming out of your mouth. That's how cold it was. I was so numb after that meeting. I was so numb after that meeting that I remember the guy said, yo, John, we drive you home. We drive you home. Take, come on, get in the car. It's warm. I said, I got, I got to walk home. I walked 20 minutes, man, with a hoodie at 4 in the morning, street lights, saying to myself, well, if God has a, these hallelujah people say that God has an awesome house. So why didn't they throw God out? Why didn't they throw God out and kept the house? Get it? I was questioning. I'm like, why did he throw Gaha out of this beautiful home he got and kept it? Because, I mean, if you ghetto, you want to keep the nice thing. <laughs> Are you with me? I don't want to live in the projects. I don't want to live in the projects. I don't want no government cheese. I'm going to take your house. So, so, so I was thinking like this. Two months later, I'm sitting in front of watching Jerry Springer. People getting slapped. People getting slapped. I, Jerry Springer was my show. I mean, you were depressed? You want to get out of depression? Watch Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is it. For the first time in my life, from the age of old to the age of 35, I heard the voice of God. My father was a drunk. My father beat my mom. My father was a warlock. My father was home. He was still absent. There was no Christmas in my house. We had a tree, no gifts. We, me and my brother lied. We had gifts. We didn't have no gifts. We lived in a broken home. We ate rice and eggs because there was no food in the house. Me and my brother would sleep with our clothes on because it was so cold in the apartment. There was no heat. So I said, Jesus, where are you? I hear my mother scream in the other room because my father used to beat her. My mom woke up in the morning to dress us at school with a black eye. Fragmented. Lonely, no love from a father. No reality that, that my father never ever said to me, he loved me. But the devil said, I love you and I'll be your dad. I said, if you kill my dad, I'll become the next one. So the devil killed the old and took the new. So I went to my, my mom's, I went to my dad's funeral at the age of 13. And over 50 women show up to the funeral. Because my father was a player. And my mom has to sit there and be degraded even to his funeral death. So me and my brother wear the same clothes for three years, going to school with the same clothes for three years. The coats, the coats didn't fit. So this bully thing, this, we was bullying in school. There's nothing new about bully. So we were fragmented. We were destroyed. We, we, we had a spirit of shame. We had a rejection spirit in my family, me and my brothers. So the devil, at the age of eight, took my life from the age of eight to the age of 35. I, I didn't have a conscience. I did witchcraft on people, destroyed families. I destroyed people. I did, I did witchcraft on my own family, put my brother in jail for five years to witchcraft. I drank more blood of mines and animals. I had no conscience. I, have hundred, I had $100,000 worth of witchcraft in my house all the way down to human bones in my home. I had a cemetery in my closet. And watching Jerry Springer, after 25 years of my life, I heard the voice of the Almighty One. Audible voice of the Almighty One. After coming back of a night of recruiting people to the dark side, I would do three or four clubs a night and look for Christians and look for unbelievers to put witchcraft on them. And I sat that morning watching Jerry Springer, and I heard the voice of God. 
he said to me, my son, how am I a devil worshiper and you call me your son? I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? And I saw an image of the sky being on fire and people screaming, trying to hide. And there was no way to hide. Never read the Bible in my life. The book of Revelation speaks about a firm fire in the skies. And I never read the Bible in my life. And I saw that image. And I felt the love of Jesus Christ for the first time grip me. And I shook it off. And two weeks later, I was sitting in my bed. For the first time in 25 years, I was, I was depressed. I was so depressed because Jesus was pulling me from one side. And the devil was pulling me from the other. And I said, I'm going to die as a devil worshiper. I'm not going to serve your church. I'm not serving you. I renounce you. I don't care who you are. I want nothing to do with you. And I remember the last words I said. I was falling into anesthesia sleep. And the last word I said, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me or leave me alone. And Jesus took me to hell. I was in this train. Hell is a location. Hell has an address. I was in this train that was going hellbound. And was full of people. And Jezebel was on the train. And Jezebel was saying to me, traitor, traitor in demonic tongues. And when the train hit hell, there was people in hell. When the train hit hell, the doors opened. I stepped out of hell. And the ground in hell breathed like a human being. I stepped on the ground and breathed like a human being. And I saw people in hell. And I was asking, how do, we get, how do I get out of here? And the same people that were in hell that was on the earth still alive. That means that they're not going to make the cross of Jesus Christ. And, I, and as I walk into the portals of hell, to the tunnels of hell, I felt this, this heaviness. I felt this thing. You know, the, 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 the fear in hell is not the fear on the earth because the fear in hell comes on you like a coat. It grips you like a coat. You can't shake it off. It's, it's human. It's alive. The fear in hell is alive. It grips you like a coat. I can't shake it off. I'm running to And the first thing people say, when the first thing people, when you hear hell, you say, I don't belong here. That's what I said. And the amazing thing about hell, that today, pastor, you preach, apostle, you preach, and you say, people, repent. Repent. And they say, why are you judging me? That's the first thing they say. But you don't know that if you take this mic and you put it in hell, there's people in hell that wish they could hear that word one more time. Shame on you. There's people in hell that if you take this mic and you put it in hell, they will hope they can hear that word one more time. Repent. And we're playing games. And I'm walking to the portals of hell. I'm walking to the tunnels of hell. And the deeper I walk, the more I can't breathe. And the devil shows up. And he said, I loved you. I loved you. I groomed you. I showed you all my secrets. I gave you power. I gave you everything you wanted. Why are you leaving me? And I was I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm just confused. He said, I have to destroy you. When he, he went to grind me the cross of Jesus Christ in pain hell. And he fell like nothing because he, he made contact with the cross and the cross was between him and I, life and death. And I ran into the tunnels of hell and I was trying to find a window. Give me a window, give me a door. I want out. I didn't want to die here. And when I got to another part of hell, I could hear the ground breathing because the ground felt like marshmallow. It was breathing. It's an organism in hell. The ground breathes. And as I got deeper, he came out again, more furious, more angry. He said, I have to kill you as much as it's going to bother me, hurt me. I said, I got these marks. These marks will destroy you. He said, that's the contract that I own you from the age of eight years old. When he went to grab me again, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. Psalms says that if you make your bed in hell, he is there. Jesus Christ, the cross, the finished work of the cross appeared in hell and dropped the devil. I came back into my body like I was in ICU and people were doing electrical paddles. And when, my, when, when I, my, my, my spirit came back into my body abruptly, I bent my knee to the cross of Jesus Christ. And I said, I know the witches are going to kill me, but I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. I got up that morning, and I threw away $100,000 of witchcraft stuff. I got rid of a daddy that I was able to see for a daddy that I wasn't able to see. 
in the Lord Jesus Christ from an evangelistic, demonic person, ranking, dirt how ranked the devil worship in New York City, California, New York City, all the way down to Cuba, Haiti, Miami, back to New York City. I renounced everything. I threw away everything. I threw away all the furniture. I threw away all the TV. I sold the car. I got rid of everything that I bought with witchcraft to start over with Jesus Christ. And the first thing that this man came up to me, he said, John, I got someone that wants to pay you $20,000 for witchcraft. I said, I can't do it. I said, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. The guy fainted. <laughs> and the security people in my mother's neighborhood, they all clap because I got saved. Because I was, I was a force to be reckoned with in the dark side. And from a, from a demonic general, as an evangelistic demonic person, I became an evangelist for Jesus Christ. So my altar call, before I do my altar call, I'm going to share one more thing with you. I'm doing life in Jesus Christ. I'm so indebted to the cross of Jesus Christ. I want no parole. Back, backsliding is a choice. I don't believe in backsliding. I owe too much to the cross to leave Jesus. The Bible says, Peter said, where will we go if you have the words of eternal life? But I'm not going to be bound to no one but Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be a surviving Christian. God didn't call me to be a surviving Christian. I'm not a peasant in the kingdom. I'm a child of the most high God. There's no stronghold. There's no pattern. There's no cycle. The devil doesn't own no legal rights in my life. I had cut people off. I have, I even had, when I was a young Christian, I had, I had girlfriend. And I had to cut her off. God said either her or me. I can lose everything my sister in my life. Even down to my daughter, which will hurt me. And I'll probably be in therapy for a while. But I can't afford to lose Jesus Christ. Because I'm going to finish my race. And I'm going to beat the devil like a piñata in the Mexican party. <laughs> and the candy come out of his pockets. In the name of Jesus, that's what it's going to be. So before I do my altar call, I just want you to reflect on one thing. How do you want to finish your race? The biggest spirit in the church, sometimes we talk about Python spirit, sometimes we talk about Jezebel, Ahab spirits in the church. But you know, what's the biggest, you know what's the biggest spirit in the church that is manipulating the church, that is controlling the church? And I'm not talking about the church of building, I'm talking about the people in the church, us. You know what's the spirit of the church that's killing all of us? No, not even fear, as, much, as, as deep as that is. I'm writing a book next year, it's called Destroy Fear. But you know what's the biggest spirit that's killing the church today? It's a compromising spirit. I'm going to compromise because I, want, I don't want to offend that sister. I'm going to compromise because I, I, I don't want people at work think I'm a Christian. I'm going to compromise and hang out with these people and joke around and say dirty jokes or curse or do what I got to do because I don't want them to feel. I'm going to compromise and spend more time on social media for my young people. And I'm going to act like my friend because I don't want them to feel, you know, I don't want them to feel like, you know, I don't want to be left out. And you compromise in your way to hell. Because you could, you could say, I'm young. You don't know you got a week left in your life, Jack. You don't know you got two days left in your life. You don't know that, 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 that you have lost the way and the devil has legal rights to destroy you. Because you don't hear God anymore talking to you. Because you have lost your way. Your mind been sealed by the devil himself. And you don't hear God anymore. Now you're doing, your, you're doing a Jesus that isn't even, it's not even in the Bible. You created a Jesus in your mind to satisfy your flesh. You created a Jesus in mind to justify your actions. That's why Paul said, if they preach any of the gospel to you, let them be cursed. 
And if you're preaching and you're sitting under some gospel that is not the real gospel, or you're sitting under some demon, that some principality that's acting like an angel light, or you're giving legal rights, you're giving authority to devils and devils and demons of doctrine, and you're giving legal rights to that, or you're creating your own to justify where you are. Oh, God knows. God knows nothing. God don't know sin. Or you sleeping around, you're not even married. When I, I never slept around. I'm going to say one more thing. I never slept around. I slept around when the devil said, sleep with her. When I slept with her, it was because I was able to transfer demons into her. Because I was half demon possessed, having intimacy with that person and transferring demons into her. So that's why when she woke up six months later, she had an angry spirit, a suicide spirit, a rebellion spirit, because I transferred to her because that was my assignment to sleep with people so I can transfer demons in them. That's why six hours out of marriage doesn't work. So whoever you're sleeping with, you're taking those demonic strongholds with you. You're making a pact with the devil in your bedroom. My question to you is, how much did it cost? How much your salvation cost? How much your salvation cost? It's sad they cost Jesus Christ everything to get you. Because you were in the pawn shop and Jesus went and redeemed you. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, this room would be empty. So why is it that you're flirting with the devil? Why is it you're in bed with the devil? How could you say you love your wife, but you're cheating with her with the hoochie? I hear people say, I love my wife, but he's hanging out with some girl. I know, I heard Christians saying that. Man, the day I get married, it's going to be hot. First, I'm Puerto Rican. That helps. I'm going to have a hot marriage, my brother. It's going to be steamy. They're going to call it the steamy marriage. I'm going to say, honey, work for me at this restaurant. Make believe I don't know you. Let me flirt with you, pick you up. So how is it that Christians, they get married for someone for 10, 15 years. Now they're boring. The devil has a lot of you. Now you think that you're going to go chase the, 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 whatever is on the other side of the grass. That's why the divorce rate in the marriage, Christian marriage, is 70%. People, let's do it right. Let's live right. Let God. I hear people saying, oh, God, I'm in the driver's seat. God is my co-pilot. Well, you better switch seat, Jack. <laughs> you better switch seats. Pastor wants to come and talk to you, and then we do the altar call. Before we do the altar call, listen to me. There's no magic here. You come, I pray for you for your purpose and your destiny, whatever stronghold, whatever things you want to divorce in. I don't come here and tell me I want a boyfriend, I want a car, I want a yacht, I want a boat, I want a helicopter. I don't pray for that trash. You want a yacht and a boat and a helicopter? Get yourself a job. You know, you know one of the biggest things, you know what the biggest things in my life? You know, what the, you, know what you know what my life been so blessed? I give to the church. I give to like almost 10 ministries. I, the, cheap, the, the cheapest people I met in my lifetime, Christians. Christians are the cheapest people. They want a million dollar blessing, but they give $5 at the altar. They want a million dollar blessing, or they want a purpose and a destiny when they're giving chump change to the kingdom. But meanwhile, when you go to, the, when you go to Victoria's Secret or you go to uh, the mall or you go, you go shopping, you spend more money shopping and buying stuff than giving to the church. That's why you curse. I give into 10 ministry. I give, I give, I'm going to be honest with you. I give, I, 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 I give in different places. Sometimes I give over $3,000 a month. Give, I give. I heard this lady needed it. She needed her car to be paid off. I took twelve thousand dollars to pay her car off. I knew this lady needed a mattress up in uh, somewhere. I, I took my mattress, gave it to her. I said, "Lord, what about mine?" I said, "I get you one." I give, give, give. Trust God. Give, give. And it's not a give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. It is, it is, it is. Lord, I'm gonna trust you to give to you. 
so my life could be blessed. So I can, not only you, you can give, but you can be generous and help others. The more you hold on to your money, man, the more it tells me where you're at with Christ. I'm going to give it to the pastor because I don't want to preach this, man. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord for evangelist John Ramirez. What a message. How many were blessed tonight? The word, the testimony, the teachings, amen, the stories, the insights into how things work in the kingdom of darkness. Did it bless you tonight? I'll tell you, it was, for me, very insightful, informative, inspiring, encouraging. What a blessing. Now, we're going to have a time to minister at the altars. Many of you have come tonight, and you need a touch from God. We're going to open up the altars in just a minute. Before we do that, we want to take this moment. We're going to do this very quickly, but we want to give to the Lord tonight.